On today's video, we're gonna be talking about this thing and one of these. Now, when it comes to my tools, be it my knife or my ax or even my saw, I like them nice and sharp, like real sharp, like razor sharp. And you probably heard it before, but I'll say it again, that if you don't let your tools get dull, it's very easy to hone them back to a razor sharp edge, but you need to know how to do that, right? And there are different tools to get that job done. So there's tools to get the tools sharp that you need sharp, tools for everything. So that's what we're gonna take a look at today is how we actually sharpen one of these things. Now I have talked, now before you click off, wait, 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 because I know I went over this a bunch of times and I always say to take a small sharpening stone, it'll get the job done. But I know a lot of people have this, but they also just uh, need to use one of these. A sharpening puck and there's nothing wrong with a sharpening puck okay i've had bad experiences with sharpening pucks in the past um, but a lot of people like them and um, i found out why i disliked them in the past and today we're going to talk about that so uh what i'm going to do though first before we get into this and actually how to sharpen is um i'm going to throw this in there i'm by a little stream so we're going to get this wet okay and that's important that any of the stones we use we get wet or we lubricate before we actually use them the reason for that is think of like sandpaper the grit on sandpaper okay or the porousness of the stone okay um as i sharpen my tools you're going to see something come off that we call a slurry but that's actually very fine metal particles that metal will clog up your stone so you want to make sure that it's wet because the water and the metal, the powder will mix and it allows you to clean off your stone and it doesn't ruin your stone. So always get your stone wet. You can spit on it. You can dump some water on it. I have already poured coffee and, and some brewski. I know that's, how can I even say I poured beer on that instead of drinking it? But the point is that um, you got to get this thing wet and then it's going to just work better for you and keep this thing alive a lot longer. So here's my little speech of why sharpening the pucks have just really never done it for me. I came to the conclusion that I love my tools super sharp. Now, not that you can't get your ax super sharp with a puck, you can, okay? But a lot of the pucks that I purchased in the past, the grits were just way too high. I personally prefer, prefer to have my ax extremely like razor sharp, okay? So I've always found that a small pocket sharpening stone work just so much better and it took me a little bit to realize and when I realized I was like ah oh, oh, that's why because the grit on these are so fine that when I'm honing my knife back or I'm honing my axe back um, it's it's bringing it to a sharper edge compared to a very rough stone so um, with that said I thought well if I would just get a sharpening puck right that has a finer grit on it I would be good to go so this stone here, red side, is 150 grit, which is a pretty rough grit. But if you flip it over to the white side is 1000 grit. So very fine grit on this side. Very nice for polishing and bringing that edge just ah, super sharp back. So um, now I'm gonna show you a technique with the puck. Okay, enough of going on about it, but that was always my gripe with pucks in the past. Um, now that I have a finer puck, love it, keep my tools sharp. Okay, so here's what's up. This is the same technique I teach with a knife as with an ax. What the puck does for us is it allows us to get a way better grip. We can add more pressure into the blade of our ax um, compared to our small little sharpening stone. So the puck um, lends well. It's way more comfortable in your hand to be able to just hold it just like this and actually work with it. It also allows you to keep your fingers back off of the front of it because of the bevel here. Okay, so I'm gonna just start with the thousand grit side because my ax is already nice and sharp um, but this is the, how I go about doing this okay so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay my stone onto my ax bit um, so it's just flat like this now what you're gonna notice is that there is a gap between the edge of my blade where my finger um, nail is pointing and my stone so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna begin to just really easily close that gap okay now as I do that what is going i'm going to see and you should somewhat be able to see it on camera is there's it looks like a black line from a magic marker between the two that means there's still a gap 
So I'm gonna continue to move my stone in towards the blade the second that that disappears, okay? So right there, as soon as that disappears, it means I'm on the correct bevel of my ax and I can begin sharpening. Now, what's important with this is that when we think about sharpening the ax, we don't think about sharpening the whole bit or we don't think about the whole stone sharpening the whole area of the ax. We wanna break it down into small little segments, okay? What that's gonna do is it's gonna allow us to continuously adjust this stone in and out as we go along. Now, our bit should be straight, of course, but we as humans are gonna have some error in this, okay? So if we focus on small little sections, down the ax edge, okay, as we go along, um, and make sure we keep that closed, all the better. Now, the most important thing that when we do this is that we don't take the stone and go too far over. That's gonna actually carve away that nice sharp edge that we're creating, okay? So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna find that towards the back section of the ax. I'm gonna find where that closes, and I'm gonna just start to make circles. And I'm just going to let my eyes guide my hands down the bit as I go. So I'm keeping the bit straight. And I'm just working it down. When I get to the back, the, the far end, I'm gonna work back. Now, I'm not really counting circles. I'm trying to just be consistent as I go along. Um, it doesn't matter if you go forward or backward, up or down, um, as long as you're removing material, which you can see right here, we are removing material, right? So I came down, I'm gonna just work my way back. I'm doing the same thing. I'm just watching small sections of this. I'm gonna continue to work. All that black material is metal that is coming off of my ax, okay? So once we get going here and we wipe this clean, all right, it's starting to dry out, but you can see it's I, as I do this with my finger, it's smearing, okay? Um, I wanna make sure I keep that stone nice and wet, okay, um, and l lubricated. Now, what I would do is I would flip my ax around this way, and I would continue the same process on this side. So if you can remember back from a few seconds ago, we went down, back, down, so three times. We wanna to try to be consistent with that also. So down and back, and I'm gonna work my way back down. So now you would continue that process back and forth being consistent on each side until you are content with the level of sharpness that you're looking for. Now you can do the same thing with your knife. So you can also use a puck on your knife. You can close that gap and work it that way. It'll work just fine also. What I really like about this handheld method the most though, is we have a lot of control on not only the blade itself, but also on a sharpening stone. A lot of times when we lay a stone flat and we try to work this, we end up rolling the edge over too much and we cut away that sharp edge that we created and it's just not too good. Now, your stone itself, you are gonna get some residual um, metal down inside it like that, but the majority of it as we get wet, and we begin to wipe it away, and I'm just using my hand, I'll grind that on my pants a little bit. You could see that we're really cleaning a lot of it up. Okay, some of that's actually lint I just got off my pants, or am I that dirty? Ugh. So that's how you use a sharpening puck, and the, really the big difference between that and this type of thing is that this gives you this type of grip, and this thing you have to just sort of hold like this, or hold down and just use the top section. So um, really it's different gripping surfaces is what it comes down to, but that higher grit, <clears throat> it's where it's at, um, for sure. And that's it, hair popping. Ooh just explosive, right? So um, here's the thing. I would always still suggest that you carry in your haversack or your belt pouch your sharpening stone. So your little square sharpening stone, it's lightweight, it's always there for you. You don't have to think about it, you're not carrying extra weight around. And then your puck, either leave at home in your gear room, if you have a gear room, that'd be awesome, right? Or um, in your like longer term type backpack. That way when you're at camp, you can actually work with it because your small stone will still get the job done. The puck, like we talked about in the video, is just gonna 
lend a little bit easier on your hand and let you work a little bit more diligently at sharpening this thing up. So that's it. So this was Dan Wolak with Cold Cracker Bushcraft. Hope you enjoyed this video. As always, check us out at coldcrackerbushcraft.com and until the next video, stay in the woods.